my question was what is enlightenment this is it the i hate the word acting because acting means to pretend uh when you begin to do a role or something especially with krishna something just comes and you do that role is it that something happens to you or do you feel something manifest the director says three words he says sound is in rolling okay. camera and then he tells the actor action that word action would bring an action in my being <laughs> and meditation or the realization of truth is nothing but a inner action without cause and the whole thing would leave my body oh what is the purpose of life how do you take this question okay so coming to your first film adi shankaracharya now we have read about shankaracharya's philosophy advaita and all but very less is known about how shankaracharya really was in fact very less so when this role came to you how did you think of playing this role how did you think of playing shankaracharya how did you define shankaracharya what did you have in your mind you know like, like you krishna know. we know yeah. the war, krishna we have so no, many stories so about krishna but first thing is hmm. there is a director who chose me yeah okay and when he came to me i was still studying in the second year in fti mm-hmm. and i was outside a cinema hall mm-hmm. in a film festival mm-hmm. okay uh, wearing a blue jacket and a blue pad which my mother had got from london Uh-huh. and smoking a cigarette uh-huh. okay and there was this gvir character mm-hmm. whose one picture by chance i had seen in the institute it was called hamse geete okay mm-hmm. so i see this man in white mm-hmm. like i am talking to my friends mm-hmm. and that guy is there you know like uh, like uh, 30 40 feet away mm-hmm. in the hall there mm-hmm. and he is looking at me and i see that he is looking at me and he is wearing a white dhoti and a white kurta he's got a white beard mm. he's looking like a sage okay and he is coming towards me mm. he comes and stops and i look at him and he says uh, uh i think he f- asked my fti director was also there mm. that who's this boy so he said mm. his name is banerjee mm. so he said mr banerjee mm. because he he, uh, he uh. told me by my name Uh, yeah, I am making a film called Adi Shankaracharya, and uh, I I want you to play the lead in the film. Mm. This is the word he said. I was looking at him. I said, <laughs> I looked at myself, <laughs> at my, my so suit, funny. at my cigarette, yeah. and I said, Sir, what is it that you saw in me <laughs> that you propelled oh. you to oh. this thing? So he looked at my eyes, mm. and he says, It's your eyes. Yeah. Mm. Moment he said that, I I know that how my eyes look and things. Mm. I said this guy has got a sharp eye. <laughs> <laughs> First thing. Okay, so after that, uh, whatever we exchange something or something, and you know, that, so that he would be able to communicate with me, and he knew that I am studying in the F T. Then cut to when I passed from the film institute, and I am about to go to Bombay. Mm. I am still like uh, in the F T. I you know some some more time I am spending mm. before I mm. jump into this other life. Uh-huh. Okay, which is unknown to me. Uh-huh. I get a telegram saying, "Shankar, we are shooting the film Shankar Acharya. The money has been uh, this thing, uh-huh. and please come to Madras quickly. You know, okay. something like uh-huh. this." I said, "Wow, you mm. know, uh, without a struggle, uh-huh. I have already I got my first film." Uh-huh. So uh, when I go there, I he gives me the script. Mm. and i studied the script for a long time okay 
Okay. Mm. So this is the advantage that you have when you are doing your first film. First film. Uh, That's why they those works are so unique. Now I don't think they give scripts also. Do they give such detailed scripts now? I don't know. Some so. people are giving. Some uh, people are not giving. Uh-huh. All kinds of people. Some people are giving dialogue on the set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm doing Telugu pictures where I get French dialogue on the set, and you know, not knowing the language, I still have to manage it somehow. So, uh, so how basically what you are asking is how do you approach a character? Character, no, that in, character about which you know nothing. There is no reference point. Uh, most of the characters you do, you do not know nothing. Uh, like historical, mythological, we still have some reference. Like Ram, we still have a reference point. Why? Adi Shankaracharya, less of a reference because I don't remember. See, this is how he used to walk. This is how he used to talk. Basically, basically, you know? he mm. was a sannyasi. Mm. So we have a reference. Um, One. only that much. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So then, he is a person who has written so many works, like mm. you know, that 13, 14 books which he has written. Mm. Uh, Anand Lahiri, this, mm. that, so many. Mm. So, when I asked the director, mm. I said, Sir, I know your script. Mm. You know, mm. I said, By the way, all my uh, Sanskrit lines, uh-huh. uh, the film was in Sanskrit. Sanskrit, right? yeah. So, mm. I had recorded it in a tape. Mm. And every night when I used to go to sleep mm. in Bombay or wherever I was, I used to listen to their tape, so I knew the whole script by heart. Oh. Mm. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. So, like, he could shoot any scene, I knew all the dialogues. Mm. <laughs> and mm. that kind of preparation, if you have, then mm. you are very free on the set because, mm. you know, your mind is free from what you have to say, yeah? mm. nah, what you have to say. Like, how we are talking in this interview, yeah, yeah. I am not thinking what I have to say. Yeah, yeah. If I have to, uh, what I have to say, no, no, not this line, sir, mm. you have to say like this. Then it becomes, yeah. Ah, so, similarly, when you are in front of the camera, mm. your words should just flow, you know. Mm. Ah, so, it can only flow with, where it is not in your conscious mind, it has gone deeper into your unconscious. Yeah, then it course. will flow. Mm. Ah, Absolutely. So, yeah. ah, so, therefore, I think I was reading in some book or something, the way to make any shloka or anything subconscious is at least to learn it and speak it 12 times. Okay, ah, they have okay, worked okay. that out. Ah, <laughs> so I ah, found that very interesting. Twelve has got some significance. Twelve times, yeah. you know. So mm. that's how they had learned all the shlokas when there was no writing in India. Mm. So they had worked there. I tell you, India was such a great country, mm. and we can, uh, you know, get back to a little bit of its glory. Mm. Uh, there was so much intelligence in this country. Absolutely. And mm. everything was researched and it was all connected to facts. Mm. No fancy this thing, the, mm. I think this and I think that. No, mm. I think this is it. Yeah, yeah. You it was know? so scientific. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. So, anyway, so that's. So I told Ayer this one thing. Ayer is sitting in front of me. Is it a long answer I'm giving? It's no, no, no. Answer. You tell. This is very uh, interesting. Uh. So Ayer is sitting in his uh. office. He had one simple office, uh. and he had one steel ka covered with all the books in it, uh. like you have that uh-huh. blue uh-huh. covered. Same. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sitting in front of him. I say, Sir, uh, I know your script very well. I know the lines very well. Mm. Now my next question is, uh, how does he walk? How does he exactly? Yeah. How does he smile? How does he sit? Mm. How you know? How does he this thing? So uh, and these pictures which you are which you are showing, uh-huh. Ravi Verma has painted that Shankaracharya mm. that which we see with you know mm-hmm. a round face and for this thing. Yeah, that yeah. is not the real Shankaracharya. Uh-huh. So when we started, Acha, now he had signed me as an actor and associate director. Mm. He did that for both the movies. The mm. other movie also. He because he knew that I know filmmaking. Mm. So uh, anyway, his reply was that Banerjee, I have written this script with three masters. Mm. Okay, who oh, are masters in Sanskrit and Advaita? It's not only it's not my work. Mm. Okay, and you are asking me how he walks. How he does? Yeah. <laughs> He folded and says, I don't, I cannot answer this question. Mm. All I can give you is, mm. he took out all the works of Adi Shankaracharya with so many books. And he mm. says, this is what he has written. Mm. And you can read if you want. So, I looked at the books. And my next thing was, sir, can you give me a room? Mm. 
mm. where nobody disturbs me and calls me for food mm. okay and whenever i want to eat i will come out but i don't want any disturb so he said okay one minute ah in front of me this neighbor's house has a room at the top okay <laughs> there was a lane and uh-huh. we were like in t nagar or something uh-huh. in madras so that room was given to me and two three days or four days or five days i don't even remember the number of days mm. i was just reading those books sleeping on them reading sleeping you know i was like in a kind of a trance i was like you know mm. and I, sometimes when i would feel very hungry i'd come out to eat you know mm. and then when i finished all this like a couple of days later that i came out of it and i told like uh, i think i understand how he used to think you know but as an actor i want to know how he used to behave yeah his his gesture his walking is everything so you know, his answer was again that that i don't know so i was you know with all this thing which i had read and i had gone into a very strange state of mind mm. my question was what is enlightenment this guy got enlightened at 16 what if i don't have an insight into that thing no mm. how will i uh, you know Mm. Uh, how will i uh, do it and uh, to me acting the i hate the word acting because acting means to pretend yeah okay the literal meaning is to pretend acting means to pretend yeah it means mm. to pretend mm. you know you are pretending mm. okay and i think if i pretend it's very easy for me to do you know for anybody to do a, a you know straight mm. phrased a sage yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. but that's a cliche mm. that's not coming from your you know inside your, your being, being yeah. from that unknown center of yours it's not it's not emerging mm. you know you have already imposed it mm. uh, so therefore it will be flat and dead and because it is not affecting you how will it affect the audience yeah ah, see here i have told a, a secret Uh, of art yeah, yeah if i am writing a poem which is really sad and my eyes are not watering and my heart is not bursting the reader will the reader not will be not affected get, yes 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 mm. so this is what i have understood about art mm. that if you don't live it you know it's not you real cannot. it will not be conveyed as a real thing to them mm. you see mm-hmm. so anyway i was in that trance in between and i was used to walk by the side of a street in madras in the evening mm-hmm. and they used to sell these flowers mm-hmm. they had these white flowers which they put in the mogra mm-hmm. uh, in the evening you know and summers it was around summers that time. yeah and you, when you go around that flower thing you get this good smell mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. so i was actually not really talking to anybody and somewhere this my mind was like in a zone of what is it Mm. you know mm-hmm. that kind of a zone and now yeah. i am saying but even that time i didn't even know that i was i was you know little <laughs> zoned out uh-huh. and then in that flower thing i saw some roses rose petals mm. so my hand just went and picked up those rose petals and i started smelling that rose mm-hmm. when i smell that rose that essence which went inside me did something to my brain and my being and suddenly i got a flash of oh this is it <laughs> i can't express yeah, it yeah. but i sort of got it you know <laughs> it's in that silence i got that thing and i was like it's you reka <laughs> uh, uh. uh, this is how you get the the heart of the character it comes in a moment mm. you know when you have worked from the hair mm. to the skin to the flesh to the bones and you are coming to that marrow that marrow comes in a flash mm. is it <laughs> you come to the heart the your and that marrow comes in a flash and then everything is so easy mm. but when i was doing that film what i asked ayer was i said mm. sir i have only one request that wherever i am shooting you will give me a bowl in mm. which there will be rose petals oh So yeah. throughout the movie, whenever they were shooting, no, I was just spreading my rose petals and going into the shot, and it was coming whoop. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. One thing which I have seen with my own eyes, and uh, when I was with you during the shoot of that Krishna, right? So I have seen it with my own eyes, and I had heard it before I had met you. Hmm. That 
uh, when you begin to do a role or something, especially with Krishna, something just comes and you do that role. Okay. So when I was with you during that role, just before the shot, I saw you and I was, I knew something, you know, about it. So you were just slouching on the chair like this and almost like lifeless and doing, having your careers and all that. And the moment that crown was put on your head, I could see everything in you change. Your eyes changed, your uh, face changed, your hand movements changed. You know, you are a little macho in your behavior. You turned a little. So is it that something happens to you or do you feel something manifests or comes from outside? Is What does, what exactly happens? See, this happened after... Even in Vivekananda, I think something happened. After I went into this deep meditation for 18 months and things like that. After that, I did a film called Swami Vivekananda. Hmm. Okay. It right. had never happened before. This hmm. is what happened. Hmm. See, actually what meditation means what? Hmm. Meditation means that... the body mm. okay and it's subtle bodies mm. okay and the subtlest body which is you know where you have these chakras and all those things your energy body mm. okay these this whole thing is now in an open state mm. Like as a person, as a limited this thing, we are so we are always living in a uh, in a limited consciousness, closed consciousness, closed consciousness. Closed consciousness. Yeah. And when this thing, whole thing explodes, mm. okay, you are now in an open state. An open state to what? Open state to this whole cosmic mm. reality. Mm-hmm. Okay. Therefore, meditation or enlightenment means when I use the word meditation and enlightenment they are interchangeable actually to me in, if you are not enlightened you med- the meditation has no meaning mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. meditation is the action of this pure energy on your you know, conditioned consciousness and the dissolution of that or mm. the release of that mm-hmm. okay it's like uh, putting a uh, sunlight on a piece of ice. This is what you call cosmic. And the ice yeah. getting dissolved and this thing and after some time there is no ice. Mm. <laughs> there is only the sunlight. That is enlightenment. Mm. <laughs> you give it the name cosmutation also, no? Uh, cosmutation is. because mm. it is this cosmic energy. Mm. Okay. And it's not cosmic also. Cos- I use the word cosmic in the sense cosmic means order. Mm. So there is an energy, okay, without beginning, without end, without cause. Mm. Most important thing to understand is it has no cause. Okay, without cause, it's infinite. And in that infinity, there is this universe, which is to us, to us, the universe is so infinite as a person. But in that light, the universe is nothing, it's like a ball. So, so infinite is that infinity and it's solid, hard, it has no space, no time, nothing. Mm. It is so real, so real that this world is like what dhua in front of it. It's like, what do you call dhua? Uh, mm, it's like mist. Mist. Mist, yeah. This, this, this what you yeah. see as real, no, it's actually mist. Yeah, it's actually mist. Mm. And you don't have to do anything if you just refuse to move from whatever your situation is. Okay? That's where you will realize. Mm. We are always moving away, moving away, moving away, moving away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay? Okay. So, so uh, going back to Vivekananda. So, uh, in one and a half year, like this light first struck me at 90, when I was nine, in 1993, April. Mm. Okay, first it was a flash. And then I went to this Nityanand's place, Ganesh Puri, so many things happened there. Mm. Then 
after about then lots of things started happening inside mm -hmm. and you know there was a very like a 12 10 12 months uh, uh, and then i was hit with another very huge hit of light mm. okay and how i survived that it's still a miracle i thought i'll be dead like you know finished but nothing happened and i survived then i did vivekanand okay and somebody i asked ki you know why this hit me he said it hit you so hard so that you could do vivekanand mm. <laughs> that is a good answer. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, when I went to do Vivekanand, I used to sit with my legs up in the chair, you know, like this, and another leg like this, and uh, my head used to be like this, and I used to feel so much bliss, and there's uh, so many things happening. Okay, mm -hmm. and I was like very abnormal, you know, and Vivekanand. It's just the opposite of how I was physically in that During state. During that time. Okay. But GVI here huh. and me have such a uh, huh. inner connection. Uh, huh. inner, he just like knows me from m more than my... Uh, mm -hmm. Like somehow he knows me. So he would tell. He had so much confidence. If I was in this place, you know, I would have got lost. My, so yeah, this guy, he will he be able to do it? <laughs> so everybody is telling GVI, sir, how will he do? How will he do? Uh, so you said when the shot starts, then you see. Uh, you see, that is the thing that I had, and also with Ayer and me, when I was when I was doing Shankaracharya, uh, that was in eighty one. Uh, I told him the next picture I will do with you is Vivekanand, and now it's ninety four, eighty one uh, and ninety four, thirteen years. So you knew it exactly. Uh, in between, he called me for one or two films. I said no, sir, uh, Vivekanand only. Uh, next. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So now I go to do and uh, in the beginning, the, this thing started happening that when I, for me also, it was a strange thing. It's not something I do. Mm. Mm. So, so, but I don't know, this, this, you know, in a, in a, it's like a very strange thing. Like Mithun and me, mm. we told GVI together. <coughs> okay. What we said? Uh, sir, for this film, please, we have one request. Mm. Okay, and he also saying the same thing. Yeah. Then I am looking at him, he's looking at me. And uh -huh. then both of, the, of us are saying, this is Ayer standing, this is Mithun and me, right? Sir, no rehearsals for this film. Uh -huh. Same time he said, and we looked at each other. <laughs> you know? Uh -huh. So Ayer was like, huh? so, like, if you don't show, the director what you are going to do uh. then the next question is then what is the director there for <laughs> yeah. okay so we said don't worry so you sit there what we do if it is not good or not perfect we will do it again mm. but don't make us do it and you know mm. this thing. Bas, we started and one month we shot and it was ta, 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 ta. and I heard the was like we were blown out completely. Huh. We were blown out. And what started happening to me was this. Now, this is the point which you asked. Huh. So, for the camera, we used to give a rehearsal. Like, camera is going to track. So, we have hmm. to give a rehearsal. They have to, you know, see that hmm. focus points on that. But that was just mechanical. We are not acting. You know, we are saying, dialogue is Okay, everything, everything is ready? Ready. Now, I am still standing slouched. Okay, where is Vivekananda mm. this? Like, you know, uh, something like this, uh, like you know? Lion. Ah. Uh. So, I'm still standing slouch, okay? And the director says three words. He says, sound, he's saying rolling, rolling, camera, and then he tells the actors, action. Okay, that word action, I know it's directed mm. to us, right? would bring an action in my way. <laughs> okay, and meditation or the realization of truth is nothing but an inner action without cause. Okay, and what used to happen was there used to be this silent sound and the we have heard of this joke, no, the sky is falling, the sky is falling mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it's like a like big joke. 
actually the sky used to fall inside it was mm-hmm. like space mm-hmm. and the actually there was a silent sound like this oh that's how i much i used to expand means obviously there was no limit and talk my eyes would open my body was in that perfect position mm-hmm. and i was saying that dialogue and this this, this and it was cut <laughs> and the whole thing would leave my body because it was so powerful that thing okay would leave my body oh this is how it happened mm. now what is this what is not <laughs> this you have to ask that energy yeah yeah but i know one thing mm. after this i then krishna also krishna then, also then krishna also during also bhagavad gita and krishna happened. the energy was total love and mm. light and are krishna was so amazing mm. anyway what i'm trying to say is that so there is this that level of art of an actor mm. where you are doing some preparation mm. and there is that and then from that preparation something is coming out mm. something is coming out okay the what mm. all the good actors but this is not something else here mm. this is mm, the insight which i have now is that every human being is a ball of energy mm. if you can co- contact that energy Okay, all the emotions and everything else will automatically. Automatically, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. It's like mm. SD energy is two twenty and Vivekananda is four forty. Mm. If you, the moment you make SD energy four forty, I am Vivekananda. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Tune so into that energy. So it's a very energy. quick process of mm. jumping into that character, the heart of the character. Mm. Yeah. then right. there is not then to you don't even know what's happening mm. <laughs> uh, and the strange thing was it used to leave me also mm. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me uh, <laughs> how is it like because you are what you are <coughs> you got these roles or because you got these roles you are what you are did though the films but which what you am i ah see uh, no, 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 no you are saying i am something but what am i like you know uh, i am saying there is only two state huh. either you are closed or you are open mm. so you can say i am open mm. that's all <laughs> no like mm, what you are in the sense the kind of life you are leading the kind of the enlightenment that hit mm. you you know mm. all coming out living near the woods uh, almost leaving everything renouncing no, no. Every, all See, this see when you go to the level of energy mm. there is no concept mm. energy is not a concept it's pure action you have come to the heart of life you know then you are nothing energy energy doesn't say i am something sun doesn't say i am something mm. <laughs> so you are exactly. asking a wrong question mm. the the idea that you are something that's what i i was telling in the morning if somebody asks me how do you define man mm. it is very simple i define man as a case of mistaken identity what's that mistaken identity any identity which you have mm. if you think you are a woman if mm. you think you are a sage if you think you are enlightened then you are worse <laughs> ah <laughs> if you think you are that. a great actor which some people in bombay think <laughs> and if you think you are a great shayar you know mm. you are a uh, you're <laughs> nothing <laughs> nothing you're so when idiot. you are nothing you're an idiot if you think like that uh this is the beginning of idiocy and self pride and this that and whatever hmm so that means when you are nothing you can be anything or everything and nothing is everything nothing is because everything. there is no such thing as nothing hmm show me nothing hmm ah uh, so uh so there nothing is nothing is not being a thing not being an idea not being x y z that hmm. is all hmm it, uh, it's like it's like a calf which is tied to a, a rope hmm. okay 
so if he breaks free of the rope hmm. he is not tied now what he is the you can't define hmm. ah so that tying of that rope the untying of the rope is nothing hmm. you have only tied yourself you have accepted some idea she is my mother she is my father i am an actor hmm. i am this i am a nobel prize winner i am a great writer i am a hmm. poet i am an actor yeah <laughs> please means nothing though it means nothing uh, uh, uh just strangely i see everybody these days they keep asking what is my purpose in life i mean <laughs> it's a very weird question you for ask, me also i we, never ask i am never asking asked. me uh, no. we are having a conversation no, 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 don't no, no, talk no, about no, no, people no no because you know this conversation has no meaning if it is not Conveying ah, this thing. This is what the mistake. Um, everybody. No mistake. Peep, no. You are the people. No, no. I have no. Then, so I have no question because hmm. I have heard all this hundreds of hundreds no, of times. That's a different so thing. So I am asking this question because if okay today I don't have this. Maybe as a kid I even asked this question once or twice. What is the purpose of my life? Why? Because I also felt what am I doing here? You know. So there are many people who till the age of twenty, thirty, they just don't know they are. moving around aimlessly and this question comes to everybody's mind what is the purpose of life what i mean how do you take this question so you are boring not life is boring the worst situation in my life was when the woman i loved was married to someone else only in love the two lovers become naked to oh. each other life become naked to a human being who loves life How can you see what is going to happen in future? I have hardly seen you work. But the kind of life you lead is better than most of the people who work for 20 hours a day. So what is this formula if you can give it? Before you do great work, you put the house in order. What you are saying makes sense, but that doesn't mean you in totality have to be 200% correct in everything you whatever you are. That is hero worship. Then you know my mind doesn't question you. and this is what happens in india why do we have this psyche of doing this hero worship kindly subscribe and share our videos